So right back at it, we're here with Jennifer Cogley from the City of Berkeley's Economic Development Office. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for taking time out of a busy day to come down and talk to us. So uh, as we talked about, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and you feel free to answer or not answer those questions in any way that you want. I'll do my best. Great. So let's get to know you a little bit. How old are you? I am 40. Okay. And do you have a political orientation? Uh, I guess you would call me a Democrat. Okay. How about religion? Do you have a religion or religious affiliation? Uh, I guess in, in dating sites, I put myself as spiritual, but not religious. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. And uh, what's your job title or job titles in the community? I am the Sustainable Business Coordinator for the City of Berkeley in the Office of Economic Development. And I also manage the contract for Buy Local Berkeley, which is a local consortium of small businesses and merchant groups that are raising awareness about buying from locally owned independent businesses. Great. And how do you see your role in the community? Um, I used to joke that I'm the, um, remember the love boat and there was Julie who was in charge of the social activities and whose job was to make connections amongst all of the love boat passengers. That's my job. I, I figure we're on this cruise to sustainability and my job is to make sure that everyone who should know one another knows one another and that there are opportunities for those people who want to meet, meet and then can make their um, connections and projects happen. So I consider myself a catalyst. Sounds like you uh, live in the Mal Malcolm Gladwell School. You're a super connector. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's talk about this. What, what do you see or talk about your relationship with the local independent community? Um, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the local independent community. For me, I grew up in a small business. My mother owned a small business, um, and I've managed to find a job where I have the stability of working in a government, so I have um, a steady job. <laughs> um, but I get to help these small businesses that are really make uh, our communities special. And I got interested in this when I lived overseas in Russia. Um, this was in 1989-90, and there, because of their system during the Soviet times, there were no small businesses. Um, and despite my super left inclinations at the time, um, I found that one to be one of the things I missed the most when I lived over there, that there wasn't those quirky, strange, bizarre businesses that make our communities really special. Um, and through the course of my career, I've been able to find a way to connect, to be helpful to those businesses. Um, and in Berkeley, we have everything from handmade glass makers to um, passionate booksellers and um, people who've been able to close the loop in terms of turning trash into saleable high-end items. Um, and it's that creativity and energy that I get to support and move along. Pretty cool. It's great. Great. Next one's kind of fun. So, if the local independent community were an animal, what animal would it be, and why? I want to say wombat, just because it's a strange-sounding animal, and I don't even know what a wombat is. But when you first said the question, that's that's what popped into your head. Into huh? my head. What's the characteristics of a wombat? Do you know? That it's. I don't even know the characteristics of a wombat. Um, is, is it a I'd real speak animal? I to the question rather than the animal, but. <laughs> So how about how about this? Uh, could you could you give me a couple of like two or three adjectives that you would say describe your community, um, local independent community? Quirky and passionate, Great. one of a kind. Great. Um, those are the ones. Great. Um, okay, so let's see. We've got a couple more. Um, can you talk about a time? Now you're someone who's um, gone to a couple of different communities. Can you talk about a time, if there ever was one, when a community you were in lost? a local independent business, and the community really felt that? Um, there, there are a couple. I mean, I can think of, there's a bookstore in Berkeley that was well-loved, um, played a significant role in the development of our town, um, Cody's Books. and. 
it was like losing a friend when that business went down. Um, and it's not the only independent bookstore in Berkeley. Um, it's actually, I've been, I keep discovering more and more. Um, but it was sort of the flagship one and one that was known regionally and even nationally in some cases. Um, and it was like having a, a member of the family pass away. There was so much um, sadness and it really, I think, energized, in some way it energized the community because if there was this business that people loved so much and just assumed would always be there, um, finally bid it. Um, I think that's, that's, that same wake-up call was went out to a lot of people that it makes a real difference. Okay, two more. Okay. So, um, as an organizer, I wonder if you could share um, a piece of advice or a lesson learned with anyone who might interact with this project? Um, in our community, we're, I'm from Berkeley, and so we have we have millions, of, well not millions, we have lots of people who think really big, giant, massive plans um, of how the world could be transformed. And I feel like my job in my work is to find uh, the next doable step that's on the path to that great big giant vision but it's really kind of small and we can get it done in the next 30 to 60 days so having a piece of work that's really tangible um, people can see it out in the community um, and you get some instant gratification on the way to that larger vision that's that's what I found really useful in, in projects great last one okay so this time I'm gonna ask you actually to speak to the camera Okay. And um, <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to ask is if you had the opportunity to deliver a message, one message, to anyone who might see or interact with this project, what would that message be? Um, there's a, it's what, in the beginning of my interview I talked about feeling spiritual but not religious, and there's a yummy spiritual feeling you get. I mean, this is, sounds so touchy-feely, but there's a feeling of personal connectedness uh, that you can get when you know the name of the person behind the counter. You know the back end of how their business works. You know all the ways that they're connected in your community um, that really can't be found in other unnamed kinds of stores. Uh, and that yummy feeling is something that's really worth the time to take some extra effort to find.